Welcome to the first episode of Series 41, everyone. This series, we are doing things a little bit different, as we will be covering a total of six games with just the two of us. Uh, we are actually going to be diving into some of the micro RPGs presented in James D'Amato's book, The Ultimate Micro RPG Book, a collection of 40 micro RPGs that are pretty quick to get into. But before we get to the first episode, some announcements. I like the fact that it's like fewer guests, but more games. We promise it comes out to the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, announcements. Speaking of James D'Amato, who is the editor of the lovely book that we're covering, mm -hmm. um, congratulations to James and Mel, who are expecting a lovely, beautiful baby. Ooh. I'm so excited for both of them. Yeah. It's going to be great. Um, most of the time, as uh, Ryan and I know, <laughs> babies are great most of the time. Yeah. Um, you know, as I tell people, things will be sticky, but fun. Yeah. And no, it's, it's uh, uh, the journey that they're going to go on is fantastic. And my gosh, they're going to be uh, amazing parents, I believe. Yes, absolutely. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, another congratulations goes out. Also baby related. Uh, Tracy Yay. Barnett, former guest on the show multiple times, um, who has a beautiful baby girl. Uh, we wish you all the best in this new journey as well, Tracy. And my goodness. Uh, you She's so cute. So, so adorable. She's so cute. I love the... Please please post all the pictures, Tracy, uh -huh. if you're listening to this. All the pictures. All the Thank pictures. you. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, definitely wonderful uh, to see those on my timeline. So Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, not really baby related, but kid related, maybe. Yeah. Um, for my babies, important news. <laughs> <laughs> um, Skyjack's Couriers Call season two will be underway very, very soon. Um, so you can keep up with our, what's already out there and what's coming uh, by following Courier Call on Twitter, or you can subscribe to the show um, on your podcatcher of choice. They are also on Spotify now. I saw. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can just keep refreshing your feed. It'll be coming soon. My children are extremely excited for it. Mm. And I know that there are many other people out there who are. It's such a good show. It's, it's so a lot good. of fun. E even as a grown-up. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, and finally, uh, a complete opposite tone uh, from Courier's Call. Uh, the finale episode of Losers, A Love Story was released this last weekend. Uh, and I think it really came together beautifully. Uh, I urge you to check it out on the A Horror Borealis podcast feed right here on the One Shot Podcast Network. Uh, content no warnings galore. It's it's horror, uh, but but this episode is uh, also super gay. So, um, you know, you get the best of both worlds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that we have anything else to announce for today's episode um, other than you're welcome. I'm sorry. Uh, whatever goes before the episode that we just made. <laughs> um, we had a lot of fun with it, so I hope that all of you really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It is a little different than usual, um, but like I said, it was a great time. Absolutely. So. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome literally no one else. Uh, just us this cricket time. Cricket sounds. Just cricket yeah, sounds. Yeah, crickets. <laughs> Ryan, when you edit this, put in some cricket sounds. <laughs> <laughs> We have a small cast today as we discuss a selection of games from the Ultimate Micro RPG book by one James D'Amato. That's right. We are going to be covering a multitude of games on this series. Uh, each episode will be two games from the book for a total of six games this month. Ooh. It's like a super extra bonus month for you. Jam-packed. Yeah. On today's episode, we are going to cover Pyre Waltz, a game that emulates hot-blooded rivalries in mecha anime by Soup. 
and Going Dark, a game of Special Forces Agents by Daniel Kwan and Angus McPherson. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a little bit looser of a series. We don't have our usual format here because it's just Ryan and I, and they are small games. Oh, yeah. Um, and we are just going to try this out and see what happens. So Yeah, the, the very interesting thing is um, we didn't in-depth study any of these no. beforehand. <laughs> so we are going into this pretty cold. Uh, um, which, but definitely, which is, obviously, we meant to do that. It's not because we're unprepared. We just want you to have like a really raw experience. Well, yeah. And also because like when you pick up a game book like this, you've got 40 games in here. True. And sure, you can go ahead and prep ahead of time. But this is a great book to like say, hey, we're missing a few players from our group. Let's pull out the micro RPG book and, and pick one of these games and, and go with it. Uh, and... I mean, I think that's the point of, yeah, of a micro game is, you know, you should, anybody should be able to pick it up and run it and everybody should be Mm -hmm. able to like, you know, you should be able to make the characters and play the game and all that kind of stuff in a single session. Exactly. Yeah. So like even all the, all these different games, they have different, uh, like how long this game will take to play, including probably character creation and whatnot. Um, so going dark is listed as 30 minutes to an hour and pyre waltz is uh, probably one of the more complex games, uh, in the book. And that goes for one to two hours. Yeah. And it does have its own character sheet. That's part of why yeah. we picked that one. <laughs> yeah. it, there's the one game in the book that does have its own character sheet. I, yeah. I'm excited to try this out. This is very different. We've done small games before, mm-hmm. um, you know, which were, were shorter and kind of quick to run um but these are specifically micro games they're other than i guess pyre waltz because it has a separate character sheet everything in this book is two pages yeah so yeah front and back including including art and all that so yeah and and some of them are even just one pages uh because the first page is just the title page with information on how long the game will take who made it and all that sort of stuff yeah yeah, so um you know, sit back, enjoy, bear with us, I guess. Um we're going to try this out. I think it'll be fun. It's different. I don't want to say that like it's, you know, like ruining our previous format, you know what I mean? It's nothing like that. It's just it's different. Um because there are lots of different kinds of games out there and some of them don't need um 6 hours of podcast. Exactly. <laughs> So. And, and and these are probably going to be pretty quick, so uh, that's why we're doing two per episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll get right into it, shall we? Yeah, I'm excited to see. I don't know. I'm excited to bring our nonsense to the genre of micro RPGs. It is. Uh, we do love some nonsense. Uh, we do love micro RPGs. Uh, so let's mix them together, like uh, like peanut butter and chocolate. Yeah. What's in a game? So, Pyre Waltz. We're going to start with Pyre Waltz. Um, which, like we said, is uh, meant to emulate mecha anime. Mm-hmm. Let's make some people. It has a list of questions. So we will take some time, I think, to answer those questions. Number one, one adjective to describe the last dream you remember. Oh, these are like real life uh answers then huh yes yes oh, so fun. you have to you have to share some things about yourself hey that's fine um, oh you so, know what's great about this did you just have a really great dream no i have a dream journal oh my gosh when i remember dreams i i record them in a dream journal uh-huh in the morning before i lose them so let me pull up my dream journal i don't have a dream journal i know i'm, I'm, just... I'm cheating a little bit kind of remember my last dream because it wasn't like a super great one so i'm gonna oh. go ahead and write one adjective here oh this one this one was bizarre <laughs> i had to i had to uh go to this work thing for a week where they put us in this underwater habitat yeah like um, they do. Mm-hmm. and uh gave us these pills that were supposed to last a week that allowed you to breathe underwater for a week but they weren't sure that they would last a week so good luck Look, we've all been on those kind of work retreats. I know. My last dream was that a friend died and I wasn't allowed to go to their funeral. So. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was posters apparently in the dream talking about the 500 pound fire doors that uh, were too heavy to open during a fire. 
Uh, but dogs were fine because their doors were purposefully <laughs> later. <laughs> okay, so pick one adjective to describe that and write it on your note card. <laughs> All right, my note card's going to be virtual um, because I don't have note cards in here. Somebody came unprepared. I am very ill-prepared for the micro RPG uh, experience. Okay. Okay. So All should right. we go through these, like, our answers or? So I think we'll read the questions and then, like, you use the answers to the questions to name things. Oh, okay. Um, so, like, your mech name is one and seven. So I think we'll, we can talk about oh, what we'll our answers there. are when we do that combination. Oh, fine. Okay. Um, so number two, one adjective to describe what you admire about the other player. Oh, okay. Number three, one weapon to symbolize your last failure. Oh. Ooh. What does that mean? Ryan's like, I can't think of a time that I failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I am actually going to... Gonna... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to how to weaponize that, right? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's like anything that can hurt someone else can be a weapon, right? Right. So, like, I think I think it can be abs- kind of a little more abstract than like grenade launcher, but I guess maybe that's <laughs> you know, right? Um, yeah, I don't think it has to be like an actual weapon. I think anything that can be hurtful, because again, these are all used to name things so it doesn't have to be okay what we are doing is making names for things yeah that makes sense what did i fail at last finding the park for the fireworks (laughs) (laughs) we didn't get lost i mean you did you did eventually figure it out we did figure it out uh we went in the proper direction the entire time and then we got there just wasn't on the streets we had planned out you know it's a little adventure Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Do you have one? An answer? Um, I, I'm just going to go with that. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, number four. One adjective to describe the last promise you made. Oh. Yeah. This one's well, getting really personal. Yeah, this is, um, <laughs> I don't know if I was ready for this. Um, <laughs> the last promise I made. Oh. I know I promised my kids something yesterday. Mm, okay. Adjective to describe the last promise you made. Hmm. I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. <laughs> That's like the source here. So do you know what the promise was? Yeah. Maybe we could uh, workshop it. Is stalwart an adjective? It's an adjective, right? Yeah, that's an adjective. That's a good adjective. Okay. We'll, we'll say that. Stalwart. I like it. Is a word that people use. Mm -hmm. And not regularly, but they should. (laughs) They should. It should be more. Okay. Uh, Number five. One noun to describe what makes you feel validated. Oh. A noun. Person, place, or thing, huh? Right. You have one or? Yep. Okay. I'm good. All right. Number six. One flower or plant that symbolizes your strength. Oh. So first I have to think of what my strength is, and then a plant that goes with it. Interesting. I got one. You're so quick. It's not an easy question, though. No, it's not. That's for sure. I just thought of plants first, and it was like, does that apply to something that I'm strong about? This is not your greatest strength. It's just a strength, I guess. It's true. And then, of course, like different colors mean different things. Right. I don't know what my strength is. Is it domestic economy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, would that be like oh, a maple tree? Misanthropy. Is that a great strength of mine? <laughs> misanthropy. <laughs> misanthropy. Is that poison ivy? Wolfsbane. Ooh, there you go. Okay, I'm going to say Wolfsbane. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Fun. I mean, that's on brand for you. Okay. What's the What's the plant that represents, represents blood magic? Mm-hmm. Probably no, Wolfsbane. At least look. <laughs> Shut up, why did you say that? <laughs> we might be changing the answer here. Um, doesn't, I don't have one of those blood. A fern is for magic, though. Mm, we're going to stick with Wolfsbane. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> Taking this seriously. 
Okay. Number seven. One noun that describes your ideals. Mm. All of them. One noun. Yep. One noun. All of them. A person, place, or thing to describe an idea. Right. Well, see, but a noun can be a person, place, thing, or idea. Can it? Yes. Like, liberty is a noun. What? Well, what did you think it was? I don't know. I always person, thought place, thing, or idea. Yeah, okay. Well, that just destroys my like, entire... Truth is a noun. My entire 40, almost 41 years of existence have been turned upside down by... By mecha anime. <laughs> by mecha anime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see here. A noun for my ideals. Sure. I got it. <laughs> I, I just love the Mad Lib approach to this. I just don't know, like, what, like, how do you, how do you have one noun for all your ideals? Well, right. I'm taking this too seriously. I know it's just to name things, but you know how seriously I take naming things, too. That's true. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Are you ready for this? I, I'm ready. I'm as ready as I can be. I'm so excited to name things. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I will say soup. Um, love that this is how we name things. As hard as these were to answer, I didn't have to come up with my own name. Exactly, because they're they're based on the answers. Right. Okay, so your mech name is your answer to one and the answer to seven. So one is the last adjective for the last dream you remember, and seven mm -hmm. is the noun that describes your ideals. Yes. Um. So what did you come up with? Uh, sorrowful pragmatism. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got uh, Anxious Shield. Ooh. Yeah. These are very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. Okay. Let's see here. Your finishing move is 2 plus 3, colon 456. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Um, so for me, that is, let's see here, the 2 and 3. Uh, sincere Words. Uh, colon, stalwart conversation wolfsbane. <laughs> conversation wolfsbane? Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, so let me see what I got. Um, so two plus three, colon, four, five, six. So this is, uh, admire what we admire about each other. Um, one weapon to symbolize your last failure. Uh, so that'll be, uh, organized map. Ooh. Colon, uh, four adjective uh, describe the last promise. Five uh, describe what makes you feel validated, and six one planter flower that symbolizes your strength. So this is uh, exciting podcast cherry blossom. <laughs> exciting podcast cherry blossom. Okay, so organized map. Exciting podcast cherry blossom. Yep. <laughs> and mine was sincere words. Stalwart conversation, Wolfsbane. I love it. Okay, well that that's <laughs> just the first part of character creation in this game. Yeah, I mean, I still like was your anxious anxious shield, anxious shield, and sorrowful pragmatism. It's so good. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I know. Okay. So let's see here. Each player answer three questions alone. All right. So we've got three questions here. Um, what does your faction seek to burn? Uh, who was the kindler of your spirit's flame and why? And what threatens to extinguish your fire? Um, so do we have uh, any explanation of what some of this stuff means? You are here because your spirit burns. Your blood runs hot enough to scald your veins and drip into the earth, deep enough to reach heaven. Your armor of steel and conviction is too brittle to hold your spirit, and only your fragile body of flesh can find absolution and victory. You see another like you. You recognize their steps and begin to dance. Uh, it's good to note that the, the subtitle for Pyre Waltz is Love is Coming Again. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It really feels like it's uh it's a like enemies to lovers or just uh extreme rivals that enjoy the dance of battle with one another. Yeah. It, it, back to enemies at some point because the goal yeah. is to be the last one standing. 
So it makes sense that we're uh, that we're doing this by ourselves because we're probably on opposing factions, right? Right, right. Okay. What does your faction seek to burn? Oh, okay. All right. I don't know. This is really hard. Well, I, I don't understand the second question mostly, right? Who is the kindler of your spirit's flame and why? Mm-hmm. So is that, oh, is that like who... You start as giant armor-clad robots and trade blows until only one of you is left standing, all while thinking about how, in another life, you could have been friends. <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, like, your spirit's flame is, like, what gives you your passion, I'm guessing. Yeah. This is probably very open to interpretation. Um, so I'm guessing this is, like, this is a person or who was the... Oh, who yeah. was? Oh, that's spicy. Oh. Who was the kindler of your spirit's flame and why? Hmm. There's a lot of uh, nuance in this one question alone. I know. There's just a lot happening here. I still haven't even answered the first question. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I've managed to answer questions. Maybe. Um, I think I just finished answering question two. Um, with friends to extinguish your fire. Mm, interesting. Okay. I've got my answers. All right. So we are supposed to share these answers and then make sure that everybody's okay with them. Mm -hmm. uh, question one. What does your faction seek to burn? I chose capitalism. Ooh. I said those who will not devote themselves. Ooh. To capitalism? I don't know. <laughs> That's I left mine though. plot appropriately vague. There you go. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Question two. Who was the kindler of your spirit's flame and why? Um, I'm going to put this as, as my first big crush that fate pulled us apart too early before we could build anything together. Ooh, yours is adorable. Mine is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I said an ancient dark force that awoke a new passion. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> really? So really what it's, happened is we were just being unapologetically ourselves. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Uh, this is what happens when we play games alone together. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Question three. What threatens to extinguish your fire? I said uh, the potential loss of my friends if this war keeps going on. I said a new way of seeing things, a bright new light. Ooh. I like it. Yeah. I think it's okay. fun. Yours is like friendship. We hate capitalism. And I'm like, something spooky's happening. <laughs> Something spooky this way comes. Uh very cool. So that's that's it for character creation, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So it looks like um we use this. Uh there's a three phases to the game, a mech phase, a armor phase, and human phase. Mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting. Uh, there's three types of successes in player world, success, failure, and hesitation. That's really cool. There's a different uh, D size, D8s, D6s, and D4s assigned to each of those uh, phases as well. I, I like that it says, uh, take advantage of what you know about your dance partner to push them where you want them. Describe what happens. You can choose whether to gloat, preach, or grunt. Uh, this is very good. <laughs> it's very, very mm -hmm. accurate, I feel like. Yeah. I would uh, always do gloat, personally. Maybe preach. Maybe. You know, honestly, I could see pick and grunt, too, actually. Yeah. Do you like all of those things? Hmm. Success versus hesitation. It's interesting. It looks like the gameplay is very like back and forth sort of stuff. Um, it yeah, I mean, it does. Like... It does really emulate that sort of like dance, which is what it keeps talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I'm getting kind of like a, a rock paper scissors sort of vibe from it too. Ooh, yeah. Which is really interesting. Finishing move uh, when your dance partner phase shifts, strike a pose, and read your current finishing move. Oh. Interesting. In the mech phase, it is four, five, and six. So it would just be exciting podcast cherry blossom. In the armor phase, it's three colon four, five, and six. So map, exciting podcast cherry blossom. <laughs> and then human would be all all of them that we two plus three colon four, five, six. Interesting. 
Yeah. So it, lo- it looks like, yeah, both partners begin the game in mechs. After the first shift, one mech is destroyed, leaving the combatant in weaker armor. This continues and will com- one combatant is forced to shift out of their own body in the passionate throes of battle. Um, and then when one or both players must phase shift but have no phase to shift into, that player is defeated and the game is over. Then we narrate an epilogue based on the results. Uh, players shift from mechs to armor suits to their unprotected human bodies. Uh, once you are forced to shift out of your human form, you die. Wow. Dark. That got real. That got very real. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's questions to answer it to like create the epilogue. Oh, yeah. If you did not win the last encounter, answer, your spirit has been extinguished. How do you carry on? Uh, if you won the second encounter, answer, the uh, you exceeded your kindler's expectations. Do they still recognize your spirit? Ooh. If you won the first encounter, answer A. Otherwise, answer B. So A is, your faction advanced their goals. What did they lose as collateral? And B is, your faction sustained heavy losses. What did they manage to salvage? Oh, that's really interesting. So it looks like at at every every phase of the game, Mm -hmm. uh, you get some interesting world building and and character... uh, figuring out there yeah that's cool so who wins who do you think wins oh gosh Uh, it almost has to be you because like you're gonna i mean you're gonna be kind of relentless on the battlefield i imagine that's probably Um, true but i wonder no it could go either way like anime so (laughs) 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 you know what it it could be because like your your like quote unquote weakness, the thing that uh, uh, could extinguish your flame, right? Mm-hmm. Is that light? And maybe my character has you are a light. Yeah, the the anxious shield, uh, a light in the darkness, uh, could threaten to extinguish your flame. Who? So I, it's pretty Ooh. evenly matched. See, I feel like yeah, like I feel like we built very natural enemies, uh-huh. like. Because I'm like, everything's dark and terrible, and I love it. And you're like, we're going to bring friendship and light. And I'm like, not the light. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the light. Why? Not the light. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't even not be ourselves for a minute, could we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we couldn't. <laughs> I it's love. Fine. I was like reading through the like the comments um, and like the the reviews on our podcast too, and they all like mention our chemistry, and I'm like, it's just because we're opposites. It's <laughs> just true. like it's the only reason that like that's what all of the chemistry is. Is just me being like, I love when things are dark and terrible, and Ryan being like, it's the friends we made along the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. What are you talking? And I'm about? like, but what if it was sad? <laughs> <laughs> um. And yeah. and your your insistence on the darkness has uh, worked its way into my uh, insidious uh, insidiously worked its way into my nature, and and now I make better characters because of it. It's true. It's true. And I have tried to be like a little less like you know, but to maybe not always cause problems. Yeah. Sometimes be friends. <laughs> Sometimes friends are fine. Sometimes friends are fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess. No. Um. I think. Yeah, I think that you would, you would win. Um, your your light would extinguish my mm-hmm. flame, my dark flame. That's so sad. It is. It is. But you know, um, maybe it would be for the better for the rest of the world. <laughs> um, That's you know, fair. You would you would bring that light, but but we you don't know what? Want... Sometimes light also creates shadows, Ryan. It's true. Um, and I can't erase the stains from my heart because of this um but you know what uh exceeding my kindler's expectations would be pretty sweet because you know maybe there's a chance after all well, there you go that's right yeah. you could maybe maybe you'll you'll gain that love back maybe that would be nice. maybe that's what it took to realize maybe defeating me made you realize yeah. that like you actually can get that back because you yeah. can do anything i can do anything do I can face the darkest darkness and and still come out uh, a shining beacon. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it's fine because you and I weren't meant to be anyway, so now you can go back to that other lost love. Exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, that's good. I really, I said it before, but I absolutely adore the naming conventions in mm-hmm. this. Like, what a fun little, like, like it was a fun discussion personality quiz type thing for us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even though we know each other pretty well, but it was still fun to be like, what was your last dream? Yeah. Um, you know, and just like a fun, I think, especially in a micro game, um, you know, even though this one is only for two players, but like a quick kind of like way to settle in Mm -hmm. to a game and to kind of start building that, um, immersion and stuff, but also do a get to know you kind of a thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, spared me the trouble of having to name something. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, like, you know, it was still part of the game. So I, I thought that was really, really cool. Um, that was really cool. I liked answering those questions. I like, I liked those three questions that uh, the world building part that we had mm-hmm. there. Uh, I think if we had played out the game, that would have come up a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot packed into two pages there. It really is. Um, yeah, I can definitely see this going back and forth quite a lot uh, during gameplay, and and I can see where that one to two hours comes from. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, really cool. Um, this is one aside we should maybe think about trying to do for Patreon yeah, stuff. Yeah, that, that would be fun. Um, yeah, this was that was a good time. That was a good time. Yeah. Um, uh, so going along with the theme of battle, uh, mm-hmm. we picked out another game, um, Going Dark. Yes. What's in a game? Uh, a game of special forces agents. This one's by, uh, Dan Yuquan, uh, former guest on the show, mm-hmm. uh, and Angus McPherson. Um, yeah. So this game, you play special forces agents. Uh, it's two to five players. Um, and we're it looks two. like, yeah, we're just two cause we're, <laughs> we're two people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just create special agents. And then uh, an agency. Oh, we do and love that, creating an organization. I know. Like, it's, I, that's, you know, I think about that sometimes. So, like, you and I love creating characters, but we almost always get more excited when we get to create, like, places or organizations. Mm-hmm. And, like, maybe it's because we've created so many characters that we're like, yeah, 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 characters. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, like, we get so excited when there's other stuff too yeah the the collaborative (laughs) world building aspect to games uh it's probably the single most uh perfect element to add to a game to get player buy-in yes and i think it helps you I, i think a lot of cases it helps you make better characters too because you can fit in with that world when you like make the world yourself you're already passionate about it Mm -hmm. yeah but we do yeah. get really excited about like, you know, making organizations or like when we made our little PI organization in Blue Planet and like <laughs> I still love that place. It's it's very good. <laughs> Pacific Investigations PIs. Mm-hmm. Let's make some people. All right. I love it. So this one, each agent starts with what? Here we have attributes. Mm-hmm. That we assign uh, values to, plus one, yeah. plus one, zero, negative one. I got to get a new note card here. So what is it? Let, let's see what this game is about first, right? Okay, yes, sorry. Uh, so in up. Going Dark, uh, players assume the roles of special forces agents, working to ensure the continued stability of the world. Cool, cool. Armed with specialized training, weaponry, and equipment, they are our first line de- of defense against nefarious forces attempting to seize global control. So, yeah, it's very espionage. Uh, They've got tags of espionage, modern combat, military sort of stuff. Uh, It feels very like Rainbow Six, I guess. Um, uh, Plenty of other uh, military-style games out there. (laughs) You're like, (laughs) Rainbow Six, other things. Splinter Cell, (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, I don't... That was a little more, like, lonely, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do love those games. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we start with uh, four different attributes that represents your agent's skills. Uh, your agent is better at some attributes than others. Assign the following values as you see fit. So there's two plus ones, a zero and a minus one, which feels very powered by the apocalypse to me. I also see you'll need 2d6, uh, which tells me this has some PBTA roots, uh, which is interesting. Um, but, yeah, let's see. Let's see where we where we land here. Um so your attributes are combat, which is hand-to-hand fighting, weapons training, mm-hmm. observation, which is perception, investigation, understanding, 
technical, which is your tradecraft, and interpersonal, which is social skills and culture. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and just like be my best self. <laughs> All right, I got mine. Okay. Um, I got mine too. So what do you right. put? So I've got uh, combat at negative one, <laughs> observation at zero, uh-huh. technical and, and interpersonal at plus one each. Okay, so my combat is also negative one. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> my observation is plus one, my technical is zero, and my interpersonal is plus one. Nice. So we cannot punch our way out, but gosh, can we talk our way out? <laughs> we, I mean, that's kind of the whole point, right? That's Yeah, look, we're, yeah, I, I, I like the idea of us just like being two desk agents going on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, like everybody else is on vacation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is all we have left. <laughs> uh, there is a there is a certain trope uh, where, you know, desk agents are thrown into the thick of things, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I can, I can definitely see that, that working out very well. This is like uh, the, uh, oh gosh, uh, Fitz and uh, Gemma uh, from S.H.I.E.L.D., Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, they're Ooh, the two scientist types. Uh, mm-hmm. They are basically like behind the lines, making all the cool tech and figuring things out. And then they're thrown into the thick of things on yeah. multiple occasions. Yep. Um, so then it gives you some info about harm. You have three points of plate, which is your body armor, and then three points of vigor, which is your health. You take harm from your plate before you take it from vigor. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, um, it does make sense. If you reach... Zero, you're dead. Yes. So let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that. (laughs) All right. You start with one weapon, one attachment, and one equipment. Ooh. They may make the same choices if they like. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pick some things, and then you pick some things. Yeah. And we'll see if we pick the same things or if we are actually capable. (laughs) All right. I got mine. Almost. Okay, what did you pick? All right, I kind of leaned a little bit into uh, my Mass Effect lane days. Okay. Um, I went with Sniper Rifle mm-hmm. and a Suppressor, so we're more quiet. Okay. And a Computer, uh, so I could be extra technical. Oh, okay. I actually went with Pistol, because I figured that is a thing that I would know how to use, maybe. That was, like, mm-hmm. the most likely if I had no combat skills. Right. I picked flashlight because that just seems like a thing you should have. Aren't you the one that bought all those flashlights for everybody in our uh, burn break? I did. I forgot about that. (laughs) Yes. I just bought flashlights for everyone. (laughs) Today we learned that Amelia is uh, subconsciously obsessed with flashlights. Really love flashlights. (laughs) Um, Okay. But have you ever noticed how whenever you need one, there isn't one? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Just can never have too many. Uh, And then also lock picks. Ooh, good one. Because, again, that seemed like a thing that, like, you know, even a loser would know how to use. We're good with uh, we're good with security stuff, it seems. Yeah. Right? Because you've got lockpicks for opening locks. I've got computers for extra security-related mm-hmm. uh, things. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So, um, that's our agents. We don't have names for them yet, though. No, because there's nothing in this game to name them. Should we, should we name our agents, or is that coming up later? Um... It actually does not. We have to name our agents. Say, I mean, we do. We should. Yes. Mm-hmm. Should we go with like uh, uh, code names? Mm, yes, absolutely. All right. It would be silly not to. I'm trying to think of like uh, cheesy '80s hacker movie names. Mm. Like I think we have to pick a theme and then each pick code names on that theme. That's true. So let's, let's, how about our theme should be Wisconsin? Okay. Or should it just be types of cheeses? Ooh. And then um, I can be like Gruyere. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Ag- <laughs> a- agent Gruyere? Yes. I'd like to be special agent Gruyere. No, I have to look up how to spell Gruyere. <laughs> I know. But I think there's a Y in it. I think so. Oh, uh, we're, we're definitely from Wisconsin. Yeah, I we promise. know, but. We are, but we're just not good with English because we just English know for you when we see it or taste it. I don't know how to spell it. Come on, I know. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is interesting. Um, oh, it is. It's exactly how I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now I'm what cheese to, are you? I'm trying to think of like a very social uh, cheese, like maybe a Colby um, mm -hmm. or uh, a Monterey Jack. Uh <gasps> Monterey Jack is like a like an explorer name though. I know. <laughs> That's like Indiana Jones, but Monterey That's Jack. <laughs> Monterey Jack. That's true. Um I <laughs> now I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> I'm gonna be a special agent, Monterey Jack. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. It's got some nice uh, Wisconsin branding going on there. Yeah. <laughs> um so that's our agents um describe designing your agency is next yeah so uh <laughs> what is our spy agency that's located in like mm, sheboygan or yeah. oconomowoc <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's uh it, we have to choose the agency name the setting and the specialization okay okay so it has to be like some sort of cheese cheese based agency name right so i think maybe there are people that are like not following the rules for like how long you have to age cheeses and um you know like like wisconsin <laughs> has like certifications for cheesemongers and like well we we take cheese seriously in this right, agency. Right, right. With our sniper rifles and pistols and <laughs> infiltration. <laughs> Look, those cows need to be treated properly. Okay, I want a uh, post-apocalyptic uh, cheese making uh, where, like, it has to be perfectly done. Otherwise, you're endangering people type of deal. It, it almost feels like we have to up the stakes a bit, aside from your cheese is not up to par. Right, 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 right. So I, I like the idea of like, yeah, we have to raid these factories because they won't listen to subpoenas and, uh, you know, law stuff. Well, I think this is like, like, let's say like super capitalism. And so like, it is dangerous if they're not doing oh, it correctly. Oh, super capitalism. It's super capitalism. So like, they're doing whatever they can to cut corners. Okay. And like, and like. We are the cheese arm of the FDA. Is this is this like um oh goodness. Cause okay, interesting. Is this I'm like so sorry, uh, Daniel and Angus, we've ruined your game. <laughs> or improved. Mm, oh. <laughs> have you considered cheese though? <laughs> we consider cheese. So I think, yeah, I think this has gotta be um okay, it's a super capitalist society. Mm -hmm. Uh corporations have their own armies. Right. Um, or, or special forces units and stuff like that. Right. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's why we have to be well armed to get in there, right. uh, to do our inspections. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's why we're bad at combat. Cause we're, we're, we're the inspectors on the team. Right. So right. Like we're we, technically like federal agents, but it's the FDA. So like, yeah, yeah. not really, you know, mm -hmm. like, like we're, we're the people that they send in with the combat specialists. Mm hmm. Um, and we just happen to be like the 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 people that are kind of we have to do the the technical portion of the cheese inspection. True. Right. 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 We have to do the science part. Yeah, the science. So you got your observation. I've got my technical. Uh, we're both interpersonal, mm -hmm. um, but we suck at combat. Right. Uh, and our team always ends up uh, abandoning us to our own whims. Either yeah, through. it turns out like the rest of our team is actually lactose intolerant. Yeah. So they keep having to take sick days after each mission. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst agency. So what's her name? What's her agency? What's her, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, is it the, the do we CPA? Want, like, a, do we want like a backronym? Do we want to like come up with like a cool acronym and then like work from there? I, I was thinking uh, Cheese Protection Agency, but... Oh, uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. We could do, we could do, but that's already CPA, and I think that's already something. Certified public accountants. Yeah. Hey, that's fine. I'm sure they won't mind sharing an acronym. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I want. See, I want it to be like cow cheese optimization. Something. Oh, w. <laughs> yeah. What's W? 
optimization. Uh, All I can think is warehouse, and that's not right. <laughs> um, cheese optimi- optimization and weaponization. Ooh, yeah, cow. Mm-hmm. Cheese yeah. optimization and weaponization. <laughs> okay, so our organization is called Cow. <laughs> <laughs> Cow. Okay. I'm trying not so that, to like openly giggle on this podcast. It's fine. Uh, so that's her name. Uh, setting is uh, hyper capitalism. Yeah. Okay. And and then finally, specialization is uh, cheese inspection. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've got cow, cheese optimization, and weaponization. Uh, hyper capitalist society, uh, and we specialize in cheese inspection. Mm-hmm. Where's our headquarters? So our headquarters, yeah, it has to be somewhere in Wisconsin, right? I, I like Sheboygan. Mm-hmm. Because it's Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Headquarters, Sheboygan. Yeah. So this is uh, either near future or future, right? Yeah. I, I want to say like near future within the next hundred years or so. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um. Oh, there's actual uh, specializations that we pick from, too. Oh, okay. So we've got some cheese inspection. Uh, let's see if that uh, hits any of these. I mean, so, law enforcement, maybe. Yeah, so our choices are first response, security, assassination, covert operations, counterterrorism, surveillance, urban warfare, law enforcement, hostage rescue. So um, covert operations seems correct. Covert operations, urban warfare... Uh, probably would be good. Um, I almost want to do counterterrorism because making cheese run mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could be a <laughs> biological weapon right there. I know, right? Okay, so let's do covert operations and counterterrorism. Okay. Okay. Headquartered in Sheboygan. Okay. Um, and I kind of want to design the mission as well while we're here to see what, what shenanigans uh, we have to get up to. Okay, um, so, so we need like D6s D6. for this, yeah. Three times, yeah, I've got one here. All right, so primary objective, we got to roll a D6. Let's we'll see what mm-hmm. we get. Four. Identify and eliminate a target. Ooh. Okay. All right. So that's the primary objective. Location. Next one, yeah, location. Four. A <laughs> military base. Ooh. Wow. They're they're very serious about their. Is there a military base in Sheboygan? It doesn't have to be in Sheboygan. We can get deployed. I don't know. There's some in like Oshkosh, isn't there? Oh yeah, I'm sure there is. Okay, uh, opposition. Dun, dun, dun. Six. Cyber criminals. Mm, I don't really. No, that's fine. We could uh, we can could we roll, re-roll. Again? Yeah, let's yeah. roll again. I don't feel like you can cyber terrorize cheese. I mean, you could. Five domestic terrorists. Ooh. Yeah. I, I was thinking uh, if we wanted to go with cyber criminal, it would be like somebody hacking another corporation mm. to like sour their cheese. Ooh, yeah. Um, but domestic terrorists also works well. Because mm-hmm. that can go any number of ways. I also was thinking domestication terrorists. Domestication terrorists. They're just like making it so you can't domesticate the cows. Oh, yeah. They're trying to free the cows or something. Oh, man. It's just PETA. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's our opposition, PETA. <laughs> PETA. It's just PETA. Okay. Um, uh, future PETA. Future PETA, yeah. Yeah. Not affiliated no, not with current PETA. No, not at all. Not no. at all. Um, and then, but then we'd have to make it up another ac- acronym for what future PETA is. It's just a- F PETA. For future PETA. Future PETA? Oh, okay. <laughs> People egregiously terrorizing animals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is our our mission is to sorry, what was it? Um identify and eliminate a target. Uh at a military base. At a military base. It's domestic terrorists. Domestic terrorists. Oh, yeah. So this this must be like a a domestic military base, not affiliated with um, corporations, with maybe. Oh, oh no! What if if it's like rogue farmers who have like invaded 
like <laughs> the, <laughs> the cow headquarters. Oh, no. It's farmers with guns. Farmers with guns, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we got some rogue farmers <laughs> that are trying to take over the cow headquarters. Right, because they're mad. Because uh, they're mad. Uh-huh. Um, they're mad at cow. They're corporate farmers, though, just to be clear. These are like big factory farms. Yeah. Not a little mom and pop, you know, farm stand kind of people. Right. Not the good, wholesome people of America. No. <laughs> Sir. So we got some. So we got some corporate uh, farmers that are banding together to take down. Um, goodness. To take down cow. To take down cow. Yeah. Oh. And everybody they, else is on vacation, so we have to they, handle it. They want un uh, or or they've got uh, some lactose issues, sick leave. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, ironically, it's up to us to uh, John McLean our way. To uh, uh, defeating these uh, corporate farmers yeah. that are trying to uh, to do this, so we have to find probably the the leader of this uh, this this coup right. of sorts mm-hmm. and eliminate them before it uh, escalates to you know right full farmer on farmer warfare mm-hmm. to farmer on cow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're so sorry, Daniel. <laughs> <sighs> you know what? It, it's <clears throat> fine. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Look, there's nothing in here that says that it has to be serious. It's, I don't think there's anything in here that's like, this must be played with a serious tone. It's true. Um, oh, tone. Adventurous. Yeah, adventurous. That's... This is an adventure. Mm-hmm. I think the last game was uh, marked and tagged as serious, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I know it had romance, and we took it seriously. Um, uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different game in here. But yeah. No, that's cool. Um, yeah. So then it looks like the gameplay is uh, you can engage in uh, do evasion, apply training, or aid and interfere. So this is a Powered by the Apocalypse game. Um so 10 plus is a complete success. 7 to 9 is conditional. And uh, 6 minus is a miss. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you've got these four basic moves and that's it. Yeah. And then uh, at the end of every session, you do a debrief. Um, did you accomplish your primary objective? Did you avoid collateral ja- damage? And if not, what was the fallout? What happens when agents return to their normal lives? And what are the repercussions of your actions? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. It really feels like you could uh, just keep the same characters and keep playing multiple sessions of this. Yeah, just do new missions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could get up into a lot of uh, cheese-related shenanigans with this. There's a phrase I never thought I'd hear. (laughs) I really want to take down a cyber criminal that's hacking the cheese corporations in order to sour the cheeses. Yeah. But uh, yeah, domestic terrorists first. Might as well. That's wow. That's wild. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's going dark. <laughs> <laughs> we did not go dark. We we did great. Um, woo! That was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fine. I think it was. I. You know what? You put us in a room together or virtually and uh, shenanigans happen. And It's true. I think, yeah, that's the thing is I think that any game group can can do that. You know, I mean, we've all, we've played with enough other people that I think we know full well that it, it can go like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was two, two of the micro games that we're going to cover this month. So um, just to reiterate, that was Pyro Waltz by Soup and Going Dark by Daniel Kwan and Angus McPherson. Both mm-hmm. of those are in the Ultimate Micro RPG book, edited by our very own wonderful uh, podcast overlord, James D'Amato. Mm-hmm. Um, so next week, we will have two more games for you that we will hopefully not ruin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We'll see. But it was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing more. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, we'll join us next time, everyone. Call to action. Yeah, like that.
This was really an interesting exercise in going into these games fairly cold. We didn't do a ton of research ahead of time, mm. um, which I guess we don't always do, but usually we have somebody to kind of guide us through it. Yeah. Um, so making it up on our own. Um, it certainly went some places, <laughs> but uh, especially with going dark. <laughs> and, um, I had a lot of fun with that one. Uh, uh -huh. But it was neat to see the sorts of games that are out there. Um that occupy just like the two page thing. Yeah, it's, was, it's really It was really cool to see what, like how far we could go with only that little bit of info. Yeah, uh, um, and the variety of games uh, as we're discovering throughout the series uh, is just wild yeah. Uh, yeah. between them. So uh, yeah, if, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, next episode, it, it gets pretty wild too, so. It does, yeah. Next episode's gonna be a lot of fun for people, so. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. We've been having a great time with this series. And I think, you know, it's, again, different than normal. But I also feel when I listen to shows that, like, you can tell when the people making them are really enjoying yeah. it. And you enjoy it more for that. Absolutely. So hopefully people are experiencing that as well. Mm -hmm. I know I had a lot of fun. So. Yeah. Uh, but before we let you go for today, uh, we have just a couple calls to action. Uh, first, check out the Losers A Love Story finale on the A Horror Borealis podcast feed. Uh, if you haven't yet, uh, this whole series has been some of my best sound design work yet. Uh, and I'm actually really proud of how it all tied up uh, very nicely. Uh, again, content warnings uh, all over the place on this. It is a horror filled nightmare of a show. Uh, but it's also extremely gay and sweet and like the camaraderie of these friends is just shines throughout the whole show. Um, so check it out. Even if you're not familiar with Stephen King's it, uh, a lot of people have been listening to the show and not knowing a thing about the source material and saying, this is now my canon for the story, uh, which is really cool. <laughs> that is cool. Mm -hmm. Um, if, horror is not your thing or even if it is and you just want something else to listen to uh skyjack couriers call season two is right around the corner so you can check them out on twitter at courier call um you can go back and re-listen to the first season mm -hmm. you can um make sure that you're subscribed and up to date for when that finally releases um but i'm very excited about it absolutely um and finally, if you like what we are doing here or what others are doing on the network, uh, think about joining the One Shot Network Patreon. Uh, get access to the Secret Archive among a whole slew of other possible rewards. Uh, it, help keep, it helps keep our show running. And uh, soon you'll be able to expect some bonus content from us uh, at the $5 and up level. Uh, of course, uh, we have to record it. Uh, we've got plans. We have plans. We have plans. I swear we do. We have plans. But oh my goodness. <laughs> the best of intentions, it's, I promise. It is so hard to record things uh, nowadays. It is. It is. Um, yeah, hopefully soon. I, I I feel like we always say that. We're like, soon. Soon it'll slow down. Yep. Um, but really soon it will. Yeah. So we've, we've got like a literal end date on one of the biggest hurdles of us recording together yes. uh, coming up soon. And uh, once that's done, then we should be able to schedule some stuff. So uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm, an ex I'm excited for the what we have planned, mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. So, so, yes, $5 a month. Um, you can hear more of us and more of other people on the network, too. There's a lot of good stuff in there. So much, um, yeah. And you get access, obviously, to everything that was in there before. Mm -hmm. So it'll be it'll be a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of good time, review time. Review time. <laughs> review time. Um, you can leave us a five-star review on your uh, podcatcher of choice, if they allow that. Mm -hmm. um, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, um, Podchaser, other places. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Podcast that's, Addict that's as them. well uh, allows okay. you to do reviews. I'm sure there's others. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are places. We'll try, anyway, we'll try to find If you can find, find a way, if you can find a way, please do it. Absolutely. And if, we, if we see it, we'll read it. Mm -hmm. um, this one is from Buccaneer Paul from the United States on iTunes, titled Love It. I've been playing RPGs since I was 10, and I've always loved seeking out new and interesting games. This podcast has introduced me to so many fantastic games and gaming concepts. The hosts are wonderful, and it's a delight every week. Thanks for the show. Well, thank, well, thank you. you for the review. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we love hearing things like that. 
I do. I do. It makes me so happy. I was really kind of sad the other day, and I went through and read our iTunes reviews. <laughs> Who's having a bad day? There's so many good. People are so nice. People are so nice. Yeah. <laughs> people say nice things about us, um, and I'm I'm glad. Like I'm glad that it's uh, a bonus in people's in people's weeks. Absolutely. With all that out of the way, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows, like Neoscum. Neoscum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role-playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders, Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker, Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond, Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure, and Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neoscum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.